I do think that we have to be careful in interacting with people that we don't become the judges of their eternal condition or destiny, that that's God's work. And however, it is right for us to, to call people toward genuine faith, toward saying, uh, I really do believe in Jesus. And uh, faith is acting according to realities that we can't see. So happy to have John Koblenz um, join us um, to talk about issues related to salvation and can I lose my ticket to heaven? And we'll see what he says about that. Uh, John, could you begin just a short introduction to who you are and your work? Uh, yes, uh, John Koblenz. I serve at uh, Faith Builders Educational Programs. I've been there for, I'm in my 18th year. Uh, serving as campus pastor and instructor. Uh, the last couple of years, I've given off some of my classes to younger ones. I'm getting older, uh, but have really enjoyed the opportunity to uh, study, to learn, uh, teach there uh, with the students and staff at Faith Builders. Yeah. And one of the products of some of that study is uh, your book, God's Glory in the Church, um, a devotional commentary on Ephesians. Uh, and I want to start with a quote from that. Um, so you write, Much misunderstanding results from speaking of salvation as a single event when we made a decision or we went forward in response to an invitation or prayed the sinner's prayer. Uh, with this limited point-in-time understanding, we can be misled to think of salvation as a ticket we receive as something that we can then argue about whether or not we can lose it. Um, so what I hear you saying is this way of thinking about salvation leads us to thinking about we get a ticket, you know, admission ticket to heaven or something like that. And we start to argue, you know, can we lose it? Can we not lose it? Um, what's wrong with the ticket metaphor? Why is this a bad way to think about it? Yes, well, the saving work of God is a is um, not something that he does at a particular point, but it's a continuing work uh, within us. And it is a actually a union with the Savior. Uh, John writes, he who has the Son of God has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. So uh, God's saving work is not something that I can hold uh, in my hands or uh, a record of something. It's actually a work that God is doing as I trust him, as I put my faith in Jesus. And he, it's, it's the saving of us that is both something that he has done and is doing and will do in our lives. It's a continuing work. So I can imagine someone saying that, yes, they agree that this is, you know, God keeps working on us, but you know, there's something very special about the beginning when we go from God's enemy to God's friend. And yes, he needs to keep doing more, but, you know, we've made the jump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so maybe they'd feel like the way you frame it, you know, downplays that that jump too much mm -hmm. or that adoption. Um Because I don't know, would that again lead back toward more thinking of, you know, well, I got saved. Can I be unsaved or not unsaved? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, uh, different analogies are used in the scripture to understand uh, salvation. Birth is one. Um, um, redemption is another. Uh, deliverance from uh, slavery. Uh, deliverance from prison. Getting uh, being freed. The different analogies are used. <laughs> um, and uh, God does bring us to life, but he brings us to life through faith in Jesus. And I think it's, Im it's, it's a wrong way of understanding to assume that an experience is what it's all about, a particular experience in my life. It's, it's um, as, we, as we trust in him, and the, and the scriptures indicate that you know, God, is, God is the Savior, but we must believe in order for that to happen. Faith is necessary. And what I would understand the scriptures to teach is that just as we can come into the life of God through faith, we can 
turn away from God through unbelief, so resorting to unbelief. And there, there's no assurance in the New Testament for people who live in unbelief. And so the, the, the necessity is for us to continue in faith. Um, and he continues in his saving work as we, as we continue in faith and do not resort again uh, to, um, to unbelief, to a life of unbelief. So Paul writes about those who um, have made shipwreck of their faith. Uh, he, there's the language in Scripture of falling away. And so, so there is that potential, and I must not assume that a particular thing I did in the past will uh, take care of a life of, of turning away from God or unbelief. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reality is that it, this this doesn't mean that we are that our salvation depends on our perfect um, um, life of righteousness. We're saved because of the righteousness of Christ and His works, and and it's, so it's not our it's not our works uh, that save us, but our continued faith that is an active faith, mm-hmm. and He continues to save us. Then, yeah. So you said there's different analogies that help with different things. So as soon as you said that, my mind went to the analogy of the seed and the plant. Mm. Because think about the parable of the sower. The seed is the word of God. And you know, it talks about stony ground. It talks about mm-hmm. that seed did start growing. Mm-hmm. There was life coming mm-hmm. <laughs> from the word of God. And then it, you know, the faith wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Um, in trial and the life disappeared or the life started growing and then it was choked out Mm -hmm. by thorns and thistles and so on. Mm -hmm. That's another interesting metaphor. But yeah, with this issue of assurance and that kind of one-time experience, because I've also known people and yeah, one person in particular where you know, they had such a framework of there's this one, there's this experience, there's this thing I can point to where it happened. And then, you know, for many years, kept coming back to struggle with that because it's like, well, did it happen right? Did I get the right thing? Hmm. Did I really believe? Was I really born again? Um, and I think if I hear you right, you want to say with a fuller understanding of salvation, we can address some of that worry about Mm -hmm. did the right thing happen Mm -hmm. at a certain time. Mm -hmm. Yes, and even in my own experience, I remember early on with, with, I think we have... um, we have uh, absorbed some of that emphasis on a needing a particular point in time, radical change. Um, I I remember personally struggling because the reality is that um, we often come to God initially with only partial understanding, uh, sometimes uh, y- fairly young. Only later we come to understand uh, things about Jesus or what it means to follow him. And so uh, I, I personally struggled with that and then uh, thinking, well, maybe I need to do it again to be sure that, uh, that I've done it right or that I am a believer. And uh, it was it's a misunderstanding uh, our salvation is not dependent on a particular formula or way that we did it or whatever it's in coming to Jesus it's it's in trusting him and as I trust in him that the God does his saving work the saving work is is God's work uh, I can't save myself I'm trusting in him and and it's not in a well did I do it quite right and we can have these four steps that we have to go through and the reality is that God might bring us in having done step three first or something. <laughs> uh, it, it's not mm-hmm. always. I, I I read about people's stories and how they come to God and and it's just amazing how how different it can be for people. But when their trust is in Jesus, there is our security. He is our he is our security. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thinking about your. Again, a couple topics from Ephesians, um, again, relate to this thing of, you know, security, assurance. Um, so Ephesians chapter 1 talks about the Holy Spirit being a seal um, for believers and also talks about it being, at least in some translations, use the word, you know, 
a guarantee mm -hmm. um, until the day of redemption. Um, would you want to talk about that picture or those pictures a little bit? Yes, just a beautiful um, analogy that is used there. We don't use seals today, a stamp, uh, but it, it indicates ownership and um, we belong. And one of the one of the beautiful things about um, coming to life in Jesus is uh, the work of the Holy Spirit within us, in which He regenerates us and He begins to produce in us the life of Jesus. And um, so the the scriptures warn us against things like grieving the Holy Spirit or uh, doing things against His work, stifling uh, the the work of the Holy Spirit. And so. Um, uh, we um, this is actually something that is very assuring, and, and we can um, trust again that God is by giving us His Holy Spirit, making us His sons and daughters. He's actually He's actually calling us His own, and it's so assuring uh, for us. But then we must we must not take that as well. That gives me liberty to live however I want. Um, that would grieve his Holy Spirit and could stifle his work uh, within us and shortchange what, what God actually intends to accomplish by his Spirit within us. Yeah, so, and you use the word stamp for uh -huh. uh, the seal, which I find really helpful because, you know, in our current context, we can hear seal and we think about, you know, sealing a bag so nothing gets in and out uh -huh. or sealing a can or something. Um, and I don't know, it seems like that sometimes plays into, into that kind of thinking of unconditional eternal mm -hmm. security. It's like, well, God put you in the can and sealed it shut mm -hmm. so you're not going to get back out or something. <laughs> but the image is actually the stamp, the identifying yes. stamp placed on, um, the spirit showing that you belong to God. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit as a, also a guarantee of our inheritance um, until the redemption. Um, yeah, what's in that word? Hmm. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, the uh, again, it's that assurance that God will God will carry forward His work, um, and it's uh, it is it, I, um, the sense there. If I recall the the wording in the Greek, there would be this this idea of a down payment or first first, which guarantees the re the remainder to follow. So God isn't going to abandon us. He's not going to abandon his project. And really the, the, the setting there, all of the objects of the verbs are actually plural. So it's, it's actually not just individually, but it's this, it's this assembly that he's gathering. He has, he has poured out his Holy Spirit. He has given as the guarantee he's going to carry forward his work, which relates to this, this whole thing about the imperfections that we have and that our that the church has. God isn't going to just abandon this. He, he's guaranteed that he's going to carry forward his work. Yeah, and I was thinking about that as it relates to, um, to the question, you know, can we fall away or whatever? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm actually in the interesting situation right now of having a property under contract and having put down one of those deposits to show that I'm, you know, going to go through with, with the transaction. Um, and there's a couple of things about it, but that doesn't mean that it will be impossible for the seller to default, mm. even if my mm -hmm. guarantee is there. And in fact, there are certain contingencies on that offer mm -hmm. as well that, could fail to be met. Um, yeah, I do want do want to think a little bit about, you know, people who say they're not walking with God now, but they look to conversion in the past and say, you know, I've been saved and I can't be unsaved or um, whatever. Um, maybe on the way to that, uh, these words are the seal and the guarantee. So they show up in Ephesians 1, and then in Ephesians 5, there's, again, a reference. You mentioned it, don't grieve the spirit by which you have been sealed. Um, but I remember one English translation actually took the guarantee language from, from chapter 1 and put it in chapter 5 and said, in effect, don't grieve the Holy Spirit 
you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Mm. Um, and it just struck me as changing the meaning of that down payment to more like the, oh, well, here's an unconditional guarantee that you'll be found saved mm. at the final judgment. And I hear you saying, no, the guarantee is God will carry forward his part. It's not mm. that it's going to keep us from mm. walking away. So, yeah, either if you have thoughts on that or just in general, um, you know, how should this lead us? Um, maybe you're talking to somebody who feels like, yeah, I've been saved. I'm a Christian, but does not seem to be walking with God. Um, how should we think about that? Hmm. Uh, I do think that we have to be careful in interacting with people that we don't become the judges of their eternal uh, the, uh, condition or destiny. That That's God's work. And um, however, it is right for us to, to call people toward genuine faith, toward saying, uh, I really do believe in Jesus. And uh, faith is acting according to realities that we can't see. We come to God uh, we, he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So faith is is actively uh, a, uh, ordering our lives by what we unseen realities uh, that we trust in, that we believe. And, you know, James talks about it, uh, a faith that is dead, um, that it's just a it's just a, an, a, a verbal assent or a mental assent, but not necessarily a life assent. And and so it it, it needs to be an active faith. And if I'm simply trusting in an experience, really the the unconditional eternal security uh, way of thinking is is fairly is relatively recent in in church um, uh, theology. The earlier uh, Calvin would have taught perseverance of the saints, in which he would have understood that the proof of your election is that you will persevere. Uh, it it was not that. Uh, you will automatically persevere, but that that if you are elect, you, the the proof of that is is in your perseverance. Um, with the revivalist movement, it shifted more toward an understanding that my security depends on this point in time where I made a profession of faith, I received Jesus, and now nothing that I do can can change that. And Calvin, uh, uh, the, the older understanding was that, no, the, the proof that you actually are uh, God's is that God's own, God's elect, is that, is that you continue in the faith. And um, so this, uh, this understanding that no matter what we do, we can't be unborn or we can't lose our, our uh, salvation is... is um, Really, a uh, can I think, in, in its worst sense, it can give people a false, um, false assurance. Uh, many people, I want to say this: that many people who believe in unconditional eternal security are Bible believing, Jesus loving people, and mm -hmm. uh, and and I don't I don't judge them, but I am concerned about those people who may. Um, live in sin, but trust in an experience, a former experience, and they, they really don't have intention of following Jesus at this point, but but uh, trusting that experience. And that, to me, would, would be a false security. Yeah. Yeah. Both of those are helpful. So again, you're not saying that there's not many people of strong faith who hold the doctrine mm -hmm. of eternal security or unconditional eternal security. Mm -hmm. Um, but just pointing out the the danger that will often go with it. Yeah, and also to distinguish again between the Calvinist position mm -hmm. that, you know, the elect will persevere in faith mm -hmm. and the doctrine of, you know, unconditional eternal security, which is, I don't know, is it more like, well, you're saved whether or not you persevere in faith? Essentially, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, anything else you'd like to share on this idea of, you know, related to assurance of salvation, how we think about salvation and the ticket to heaven or hmm. whatever? 
Uh, I am grateful, actually, among a number of evangelical writers and, and teachers and so on, that there has been a significant uh, teaching against this um, f maybe almost flippant, uh, I had an experience, so no matter how I live. And I think of uh, Dallas Willard used a, a different analogy. He talks about barcode Christians, uh, where it's mm -hmm. simply you're kind of stamped and then... Um, and, and lamented that uh, many people in uh, evangelical circles uh, simply are trusting a particular experience, but they're really not following Jesus. And uh, so there, there are a number of, uh, of uh, authors and teachers that have, have really pushed against that and called their people to, uh, to follow Jesus in, in, um, by their lives. And again, I, I, uh, for... Um, there, the the issue of our salvation is not, or the experience of our salvation is not dependent upon us having a complete or full understanding of it. It's a work of God, mm -hmm. and it's always, in some sense, a mystery that is that is beyond our full understanding. And it's more important that we love Jesus and know Him and follow Him than that we can explain it exactly uh, correctly. Yes, Amen. Yeah. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. I hope John's words were encouraging to you. Um, we also did an interview with Daniel Yoder um, called Am I a Believer? where he talks about doubt is not sin, it is a temptation. Um, so that can also be a source of encouragement um, if you are thinking about issues of assurance or faith. Um, you can find that linked in the show notes um, for this episode. Um, you can also check out our website, anabaptistperspectives.org, for a wide range of content, um, video, audio, as well as um, written essays. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.